when we talk about the uh, contamination of soils, uh, particularly two components that is the chloride and sulphide become uh, very, very important to be detected in these soils. Why? Any guess? Why people should be talking about chloride and sulphide contents? The reasons are very simple because if you have soils which are having lot of chloride and sulphide, what will happen? As a geotechnical engineer, where I will face problems? Foundation could get corroded. Very good, excellent. So, the moment you do anything related with the concrete or cement and if the soils are very aggressive having lot of chloride or sulphide content or sulphate content, they are going to attack the foundations and there are several cases of foundation failure which have induced because of these two culprits. So, what is normally done is that you take the soils, soils and dissolve them in water. Normally, we maintain 2 is to 1 liquid solid ratio. That means, you take the weight of the soil and 2 times the weight of the soil is in the liquid form is added and this is stirred for several hours on a hot plate and uh, so that all the chemical species get leached out and once the leaching process is over, you measure filter the uh, supernatant or the liquid and then uh, measure the chloride and sulphide concentrations. There are ion exchange kits which are available in the market. These kits are similar to the ones which are used for checking your urine samples. Uh, so, uh, I mean this chemistry is same either it is biochemistry or the chemistry of the soil we normally call this as soil chemistry. This is sort of a titration which you are doing and uh, knowing the number of drops of the ion exchange resin which you put in the solution, you can compute what is the concentration of the contaminants. So, change in the color of the solution is uh, a good identification of uh, uh, what type of chemicals and what is their concentration which is available in the system. Uh, this is where actually soil salinity sensors are also being used. They have been found to be very, very useful and uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of soils which are saline in the in the all over the world and in our own country and because of the salinity you cannot even use them for agriculture purpose all right. So, suppose if I am creating underground facility storage of hydrocarbons and the first question is what is the level of contamination of the soils uh, because uh, very soon you will realize that if soils are heavily contaminated even if you create a very thick concrete wall as a containment or for the underground tanks the chances are that all these chemical species will diffuse into the precious material which you are storing underground including the hydrocarbons and the water all right. Because even concrete is porous. So, through pores the diffusion process may occur and the entire uh, utility items which you have stored might get contaminated. Any sort of a concentration gradient ultimately would cause the diffusive contaminant transport. The way you are dealing with the advective transport delta H upon L is I and the hydraulic gradient occurs and the seepage takes place. The same way when concentration gradient develops, uh, these chemical species will migrate and become a part of uh, the hydrocarbons and the water which you are storing all right. We will discuss in details this thing. So, soil salinity is an indication of the contamination level of the soils. The need of the hour is uh, all these saline soils are heavily you know uh, sea water intruded impregnated soils can they be converted, can they be rejuvenated. There is a big problem I hope in the entire country is facing. Uh, the coastal area as well as the locations like you know Kutch area, deserts where you will realize lot of impregnation of the salt water is taking place in the uh, geomaterials or the soil. And then this becomes a big question that how to construct uh, the infrastructure, how to lay the foundations of the infrastructure. Uh, this is the technique which was developed by one of my PhD scholars uh, during his PhD thesis, Dr. Sridip. You have met him, all of you, he is a professor at IIT Guwahati. He did a wonderful work to develop lot of new innovative things in this context and uh, what we have done is we have used a new equipment not now 2003-4 when he was working it was a 
first time in the country somebody had used this WP4 equipment, uh, we what we call it as a dew point potentiometer. Uh, dew point, I think you understand what is dew point. Uh, this is the moisture or the water vapors getting condensed on a surface. So, that is the dew point and then potentiometer is an equipment which would measure uh, what is the volume of the fumes or the vapors which are getting condensed on a surface. Uh, WP4 is the name of the equipment uh, which is uh, supplied by the company. WP4 is normally used for uh, developing uh, suction versus moisture content characteristics of the geomaterials. Now, this is the point from where the initiation of unsaturated soils starts fine. So, those of you who are interested in learning how uh, to characterize the soils for their unsaturated state, uh, you have to go through uh, the enormous amount of work which our research group has done starting from Sneha Kurian to you know Kanan Ayer, I think Sneha Jayant, Anumant Rao, Ravi Ranjan Rakesh, Srideep and uh, so many people who have used this equipment and, and Vikas Thakur. So, these are the guys uh, you should read their papers and try to see how these equipments have been utilized and how the guidelines have been developed for uh, establishing the basic characteristic curve for the soils which is known as soil water characteristic curve. Yeah. So, when we talk about the soil suction, there are two components which everybody talks about. Uh, one is the metric suction, uh, which is because of the matrix of the soil. Sometimes we call this as a matrix also. And the second one is the osmotic suction, which is because of the presence of the salts in the soils. And nowadays, I am working on uh, a third component of the soil suction. Any guess what that would be? So, if you analyze this closely you will find that the soil matrix represents the physical state of the material all right state of compaction gamma d is very important and what about this osmotic suction this represents the chemical state of the material so what is remaining very good so we have started now talking about the uh, bio suction and uh, two of my mtech students they worked in this context uh, asha and minu you see their paper, they have tried to work on and they have established that these type of suctions are very important and uh, they cannot be ignored in the geomaterials. So, for the time being, I will restrict my discussion on uh, metric suction and the osmotic suction because this is the first time you are getting initiated into these type of discussions. So, you can always build upon once you have the basics. Uh, so, soil water characteristic curve is mostly utilized by the guys who are into the field of uh, agriculture engineering or water resources. So, if you talk to your colleagues who are doing modeling of reservoirs, irrigation modeling, irrigation scheduling, you know soil uh, nutritional analysis and all, uh, they would be very eager to know SWCC. This is also known as soil water retention curve SWRC. But being a geotechnical engineer, we like to use the term SWCC rather than SWRC, but the connotation is same either soil water retention or soil water characteristic curve. So, this essentially is a relationship between the moisture content which could be either gravimetric or this could be volumetric also. It depends upon what techniques you are using. So, if you are taking out a sample from the field which is undisturbed, you can bring it cut in small pieces and use WP4 or pressure membrane extractor to obtain the suction. So, psi corresponds to the total suction and W corresponds to the moisture content. This could be theta also, theta is the volumetric moisture content. So, I can plot a relationship between moisture content and suction. So, the way you read this graph is uh, lesser the moisture content all right, okay. what happens to the suction value? extremely high and the more the moisture content in the soil, the suction value is less. That is true because saturated soils will not show you negative suction or negative pressures. So, this characteristic which you are seeing the red color is a sort of a fundamental behavior of the soil 
and uh, if you are very eager to learn this subject, please refer to the papers by uh, Vikas Thakur and Sridhi, uh, where we have talked intensively about measurement of ultra high suction in the soil and interpretation of SWCC and how to develop SWCC and how to use this SWCC followed by the work of Dr. Hanuman Rao, who has used SWCC to derive unsaturated hydraulic conductivity of the soils. So, many times you ask this question what is the state of the development of this subject? I hope now you are getting the answer. You remember some time back you were asking these things. It is not the first time this is being discussed. This has been under our radar since several years and we have done lot of work and I can proudly say that we were the pioneers in uh, working in these areas when nobody thought of these issues in geotechnical engineering uh, as back as 2002, 2003, in fact early 2000. Okay, so, as far as the interpretation is concerned, uh, what I have shown is that the initial portion of this curve is almost flat and then I have shown a point over here as a air entry value. Now, air entry value is the value of the suction beyond which the water only sorry at this point only the air will enter the pores not before this. So, the way the cycle valves work you know you have the valves there and then you pump in air, air cannot come out it is a sort of a reverse process. We are sucking out the water from the soil, but we are making sure that the air does not enter the voids. What is the meaning of this? I still assume soils to be saturated. Clear? So, as long as the soils remain saturated, the moisture content is very high, but their suction is extremely low. So, this air entry value can be a sort of a inflection point. You know how to obtain the inflection point. Uh, you extend this straight line portion and then you extend this straight line portion wherever they cut this becomes the air entry value. And air entry value is a unique signature of the soil which has something to do with the type of the soil, the gamma d, uh, the particle sizes and of course, the method of measurement and the environmental condition. So, nowadays the philosophy is like this that if I know the SWCC I need not to do any other experiment. Long, long back I had talked about the speculative modeling application of uh, artificial intelligence in geomechanics, where I had talked about different type of softwares which are uh, used for speculative modeling. So, if I know one of the parameters or if I know the SWCC curve, I can speculate all other properties. So, air entry value would be of great uh, help to people like us who are into designing the barrier systems, designing the disposal repositories for the nuclear waste. Why? Because soil is under continuous threat of elevated temperatures and the moisture migration is taking place from the soil. So, I would like to study you know because of this thermal influence how the moisture gets changed in the sample and how the properties are changing over a period of time. So, these are the applications and the implications of this study. The second term which you are observing here is uh, WR which would be very useful for the guys who are into agricultural sciences because WR corresponds to the residual moisture content, fine. So, residual moisture content corresponds to the wilting point, correct. So, people like you who can devise their uh, automatic sprinkling systems, if you have SWCC and if this SWCC is fed in the software, what you can do is you can link this whole thing with a uh, actuator and that actuator will actuate the irrigation system. So, I can do precise irrigation. The moment moisture drops be below WR, the suction values are going to be extremely high. I can measure the suction in situ by using different type of sensors and I can put an algorithm in such a manner that the moment moisture content and the suction drops below a certain value, I get a trigger and that trigger induces the irrigation. This could be a technique for disposal of the uh, toxic waste also, where what would you like to do? If because of the inherent heat of the geo of the disposed waste, the tendency of the geometrical is to crack, what I would like to do? I might like to have to do you know artificial saturation also, keep the system saturated. Are you realizing this? So, this is what the state of the affairs is, 
where you have to do complete engineering of the systems which are extremely life. I hope you are getting an idea about where the applications would be. You were asking some time back. Air entry value is the point beyond which the moisture will drop, but air will not enter into it. This is also known as the bubbling point. Clear? So, this is the point beyond which the moisture loss is taking place, but you are stopping air to enter and that is used for different applications. You are not allowing system to become unsaturated, clear. But of course, water is draining out. So, this is a sort of a equilibrium which is existing at the interface of the contractile surface. I was thinking like sir, at the shrinkage limit. At the shrinkage limit. What happens is the air enters. No. A slightly below shrinkage no, limit. Never. At shrinkage limit also, your sample is saturated, clear. And you take all utmost care that the air should never enter. Remember, if you have done haste and if you have fried your sample, it is not a correct estimation of shrinkage limit. Sample should never crack. Number one, if sample has cracked, so after taking out the pad, you should really use a lens to see whether the sample has cracked, the air has entered into it or not. If air has entered, discard the sample, it should never be used. So, by concept, the shrinkage limit is the one below which still the soil is fully saturated or at this point the soil remains saturated and air has not entered into it. That means, the cracks have not formed. Agreed? So, let us not complicate the things. I used this air entry value sir. I told you air entry value is the one if you look at this graph, you know the moisture remains constant. So, this is the point where the tendency of the air is just to enter into the system. And because of this what is happening is the moment you increase, oh sorry there will be a decrease in the moisture content and decrease in the moisture content is still holding from air to enter into the system, clear. And then after that what is going to happen is, if you apply pressure on the soil sample, lot of water will come out. So, that is why we call this as the initiation of entry of the air into the soil sample, okay. Type on Google air entry value and bubbling point of the membranes and then see the videos, it is ok. So, working of the WP4 is a equipment which is commercial available. Uh, this appears to be a sort of a chamber uh, where you have a dryer in which you can mount the sample over here in a small cup and uh, there is a block chamber inside. So, if you look into it, this works on the principle of relative humidity. That means, if I take a sample which is saturated. And if I leave it below beneath the fan, what will happen? The moisture will evaporate. And these moisture in the form of the evaporation, if they get condensed on a mirror, okay, uh, that mirror, I can use some infrared technique to measure what is the volume of the uh, moisture which has got condensed over there. So, this is the calibration which is done in the form of electronics uh, to measure what is the relative humidity of the sample and this relative humidity can be converted into the suction value directly. This is this technique is also known as chilled mirror technology, chilled mirror technology. So, read about it which gives you uh, the total suction. So, the point here to be noticed is that most of these WP4 type of instruments they work in the range of uh, 0 to 80 MPa. But of course, the new ones in the market go up to 350 megapascals also of the suction value. Remember, these are the negative pressures. But what we have proven is that uh, these equipments cannot be utilized uh, for the range of 0 to 1500 kPa. And, uh, for that, the pressure membrane extractor works better. So, in short, pressure membrane extractor and the WP4 result should be utilized together to get the SWCC. More about this, please read from the papers which I have referred to. Uh, particularly the papers which have been written by Vikas Thakur. All right. Now, the pretext what we take from here is that um, if I take the soils in their native state, which might be contaminated, and if I establish the SWCC, and if I wash the soil sample several times by using water or different chemicals, and if I keep on measuring the air suction values, there will be a difference, and that is what decontamination is. Now, you may ask a question that you know in real life we cannot do this because there will be millions of tons or the millions of metric cube, metric cube of the soil which might be contaminated. So, how would you draw a parallel between the laboratory exercise and the field exercise? 
So, the answers could be like uh, you know I am using this technique first of all to establish what is the level of contamination, whether the soils are contaminated or not. Second is I can create a small prototype sort of a thing in the lab to show if this is the volume of the material and if this is the level of contamination, how much washing is required to get rid of all the chemicals which are adhering to it and then this becomes a this can be scaled up in the real life. So, these type of challenges are still lying ahead of us, we have to overcome them. Uh, laboratory studies have been done, but when you have to take them to the field at a bigger scale, you have to be very judicious in applying them. Does this answer your question that uh, what is the significance and how the practical applications of these techniques have been made? If you look at this, it is not the matter of time. Uh, what is more interesting is I have to come up to the tail of the graph. So, for few soils uh, we have seen that this take months. All these experiments are basically they test your nerves, patients. Particularly when you are working on the organic materials, it is very difficult to ooze out moisture from them even after drying and if you are drying them the chances are that they may catch fire or they may distort the volumetric deformations could be there. So, it becomes very tricky to work on it, but I hope you can understand that these are the questions which are being answered which will become tomorrow's guidelines and tomorrow's code of conduct. So, this is the case study which uh, I wanted to share with you. Incidentally, you only talked about the case studies today and then this is the case study which I am talking about. Uh, most of the coastal regions particularly the ports are very much concerned about the quality of the soil and all this comes under the green initiative of government of India. So, most of the ports have to comply with the green ports the status. I hope you understand what is the meaning of the green port. That means, first of all this is a zero waste discharge, nothing goes out of the port area either in the gaseous form, liquid form or the solid form. But if you do the audit of most of the ports, you will realize because of the cargo handling the soil is becoming contaminated. Imagine chemicals which are being brought in, urea particularly, different type of acids, petroleum, hydrocarbon items of day to day life and so on. So, they get spilled over when you stack them and this is becoming a big work for environmental geotechnologists to establish uh, that the soils there are uncontaminated and in case they are contaminated you have to clean it up. There are many instances where the fire has to taken place uh, at this place of storages of these consignments which are known as containers. They have exploded also and these type of accidents happen in the factories and once they meet this fate, you have to clean up the entire area. So, uh, if you characterize the soils uh, of the marine uh, nature which are in the coast of Bombay. Uh, these are the properties of the soils, uh, you have specific gravity, particle size distribution, liquid limit classification is typical MH type of a soil. These chemical properties come from the XRF analysis, XRF fluorescence and then if you look at the chloride and sulphide content, these are extremely high and the cation exchange capacity is also high. So, chloride content tells you that the soils are impregnated heavily with this marine seawater and then you have to uh, do something to create the facilities over there. So, what we did is uh, we take, took this as a initiation point for studies and uh, uh, we started washing them to nullify the uh, contamination level. So, what you will observe here is that uh, we have given number of washings to the soil sample, LS is the liquid to solid ratio. The process simple you take certain amount of soil and add 2 times the water. So, this becomes L by S equal to 2, measure the chloride content and sulphide content and keep on increasing the volume of the water to wash the soil sample or you can literally wash it also. So, then L by S becomes 4 times, 6 times, 8 times, 10 times and then keep measuring these things until you get something which is within the permissible limits. So, this is one of the techniques which uh, we worked on and uh, what we have shown here is that if you measure the electrical conductivity of the supernatant and number of washing, what you will observe is that as the number of washing increases, uh, the conductivity of the pore solution decreases. So, remember we were talking about the pore solution and its application to establish whether the soils are 
contaminated or uncontaminated. So, in literal words what you have to do is you have to bring down the salinity from this point to this point if you want to make this soil uh, usable for different applications clear. So, electrical conductivity data has to be manipulated in terms of the time and money. So, these type of relationships have to be developed and then if you uh, measure the SWCC of the contaminated and washed soils. So, what you will realize is that uh, these are the peculiar SWCC curves for the contaminated soils and uncontaminated soils or the washed soils. And uh, what you will realize is for a given moisture content there is so much suction different. Now, this is the osmotic suction. So, what I am trying to convey here is that uh, soil water characteristic curve itself happens to be a interesting way to establish the level of contamination of the soils. So, this washing process is it done in large scale? So, that is what I told you sometime back that uh, before you launch something in the market what do you do? Uh, the thing is that wash water it is like oh, contaminating yes. so something Oh yes, you have, you have read our mind correct. So, that itself is going to be a secondary source of contaminant you are right. But see as a technologist what you have to do? You have to keep on trying different options. You cannot say that I cannot do it. It is like we are just transferring the pollutants from one source to. That is right. So, from your own mistakes you learn is it not? So, somebody must have washed soils in the beginning and then someone else must have asked this question that what you are going to do with this slurry. Third person would have asked how would you dry it up now this soil. Fourth person would have asked how would you reconstitute the samples from the slurry state to this state. This is how the SNT grows develops when you have to ask lot of questions. So, your questions are valid. Now, coming back to your point the question would be I need not to do the washing. Washing is you know a connotation there could be another interesting way of getting rid of the contaminants by making this a stand mark uh, as a, as a batch is a benchmark and saying if I do any treatment clear and if my results get superimposed on this graph on the left hand side or right hand side I know that this is the 100 percent drying or the cleaning process clear and where do I stand if I adopt any other technique and quantify my efforts that what type of decontamination of soils I have achieved by other methods. Now, this is what exactly Ganraj is doing. So, suppose if I give you a heap of mountain like the mountain which you have in the IIT campus on which you climb and see the mullen. This is the size of the mountains of the red mud or let us say industrial byproducts which are lying here and there. Now, if somebody asks me a question can you neutralize this whole mud so that I can use it for some purpose. Are you getting this point? This is where this type of study becomes very useful. So, what I will do is I will inject some gases, I will inject some chemicals, I will inject water and I will do all sorts of logistics to take out the effluents. So, that they do not pollute the world geoenvironment and after doing all this if I take out a sample and do this test and superimpose it over here I know that complete washing was this and I am somewhere here. It shows that yes I have decontaminated soils. This answer is better than saying nothing can be done at least I have lowered down the extent of contamination of the soils because these are the solutions which have to be given to the industry and the governance. So, imagine if I remove all this chloride and sulphide with pH equal to 13 I am sure you cannot walk on this material with your rubber shoes why it is all alkalinity and God forbid if you slip over there and if you touch the material you are gone absolutely. So, it is very dangerous to work on this type of deposits and go to Australia I mean there are the soils which are might be having sulphate contents and uh, acidity of the soil could be of the order of 2.52 again you cannot access these places. Forget about taking out sample with the help of a drill bit, <laughs> drill bit itself will get dissolved in no time. So, these are the challenges which uh, people are facing and trying to overcome. So, this must be giving you an idea about the complexities associated. So, the people who ask the question where are the solutions 